Uh, well, I've mentioned three uh, areas of hostility uh, that the laws of nature put God's hands in chains. They downgrade humans from the central, science downgrades humans from a central role, and it uh, provides alternative explanations. But there's another one which may be the deepest area of conflict between science and religion, although I don't think it gets mentioned so often, and that is in the method of approach to truth. Uh, religion largely relies on authority. It may be the authority of sacred texts, as in Sunni Islam and Protestant Christianity, or texts together with religious leaders who are divinely uh, inspired to interpret them, like Shiite Islam and Roman Catholicism. Uh, we don't have anything like that in the world of science. I, and I want to make a clear distinction. We do have heroes, as scientists we have enormous respect for. But they're not authorities to whom we go for solution of scientific problems. For example, in my field, certainly Einstein is the greatest hero of the 20th century. But no one today arguing about the theory of gravitation would settle the issue by referring back to Einstein's papers of 1915, 1916. Uh, today, it's understood that any reasonably good graduate student understands general relativity better than Einstein did. We have learned, we have progressed, and we so in science, we don't have prophets. We have heroes, but not prophets. And I, I think that uh, another difference in the approach to truth is that uh, we try hard in science to stamp out the influence of wishful thinking, whereas so much of, of religious thought seems to be nothing else. Uh, I must believe in the afterlife because how could I face it if I was going to, if my life was going to terminate at death. The one thing that science cannot do, however, any more than religion can, is to justify itself. Uh, as David Hume understood long ago, you cannot use scientific arguments as a justification for science itself because that's circular. It's a moral choice between the methods of approaching truth of religion, the reverence for authority, uh, the search for think beliefs that will make us happy, and the more austere, self-reliant approach to truth of religion. For me, the moral choice is clear, but it is a moral choice and one that can't be, I think, argued about rationally. Uh, so what do, we, what do we do about this conflict? Um, there are those uh, whose views about religion are not very different from my own, but who nevertheless feel that we should try to damp down the conflict, that we should compromise it. Uh, for example, Steve Gould, and uh, he can correct me if I'm wrong because he's here, Larry Krauss, feel that it's most important to maintain the integrity of scientific teaching, and we should try to enlist the mainline religions who are often perfectly uh, comfortable with teaching Darwinism, say, in school, as our allies, uh, and not step on their toes by talking about a confrontation between science and religion. Ed Wilson, another dear friend, uh, wants to enlist the mainline religious denominations as allies in the defense of the environment. I, I respect their views uh, and, I, and I understand their motives and uh, I don't condemn them, but I'm not having it. To me, the conflict for, between science and religion is more important than these issues of science education or even environmentalism. I think um, the world needs to wake up from its long nightmare of religious belief. And uh, anything that we scientists can do to weaken the hold of religion uh, should be done. 
and may in fact in the end be our greatest contribution to civilization. Thank you.